Track Wrestling here at Camp Pendleton, World Team Training Camp, five-time World and Olympic Champion Jordan Burroughs. How has training camp been at Camp Pendleton? It's been very tough. This first week has been grueling. We kind of hit the ground running. I suspect that after Turkey, we had a lot of things that we need to improve on. Everyone went home, back to the drawing board, and made their own special adjustments with their personal coaches, and then we got a chance to hit the ground running here because everyone was in good shape. They were coming off of a mini training cycle early in August, and I think the guys feel good. So we beat ourselves up a little bit, broke ourselves down. Now the next two days is a rebuilding phase before we hit it hard again next week. You're staying in the barracks. Yeah. You're on base here. What has this experience been like? Luckily, we have no one yelling at us. Bill Zadik isn't much of a drill sergeant. He's a very personable coach, and he gives us a lot of freedom. And it's a unique setting, though. I really appreciate the vicinity and the closeness in which I get to be to all the great wrestlers because I see the daily routines of every guy, whether they're reading the Bible, reading a book, talking to their families back at home, or just lounging and spending time on social media. I get to see everyone's tendencies, all of their habits, and I just get to be surrounded by excellence every day. I can literally look to my left in my bed and see Logan Steber, David Taylor, Kyle Snyder, bunk, 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 and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Really close, no privacy, no personal space, but it's a very cool setting. You're bonding then, you're not uh, at each other's throats yet. No, no surprisingly not. We have a, a big Airbnb where about seven fiancés and wives came out to spend time here together. So they're all staying together and then in between practice sessions and at night we're going to spend time with the ladies. So it's been a really chill event. Only time we're really at each other is in here and then we're friends again eating food, grilling, having a good time, and really trying to sharpen each other. Speaking of wives, your wife pulled one off on you. The greatest surprise party of all time, the history of men. It was amazing. I had absolutely no, no idea. I'm not invasive or intrusive at all. I don't go into her email, I don't look at her phone, I don't check our bank statements. So anything that she does really goes under the radar because I just wrestle. I wake up, I go to practice, I check my email, I go back to practice, I try to be the best wrestler possible. And so it was really something when my birthday passed, being 30 years old is not something that typically you celebrate, it's something that you mourn, especially in the sports world when you feel like you're getting old and it's really a death sentence in the sport of wrestling. I'm the oldest guy on the team by many years. So this was the first time in which I had to revisit my birthday and not on my own accord. I thought it was long gone. My birthday was over a month ago and then the birthday party was just August 18th over a month after I had actually turned 30. So you had no clue? No clue. I had friends flying from Texas, North Carolina, California, guys from all over the country. A couple of guys from the world team were there. Amazing, amazing. One of the best days of my life. It was cool. Uh, takeaways from Turkey. You had the wild match yeah. with Chimizo in the, the finals there. Just improve. There's always room for improvement. That was a tune-up tournament regardless of the result. I knew going in that I was gonna have to wrestle someone tough, whether it was Meredith being that we were in his home country, or Chimizo knowing that he likes to pop up to a lot of different tournaments to compete. And after the tournament, I understand that I have to make a few adjustments to learn how to close guys off. I felt like I was dominating most of the match. And it's the nature of who he is. He is explosive and unpredictable, and he wrestles through every position at a high level. And that's just something that I have to really discipline myself in to remain focused throughout the entire six if I hope to be world champ again in October. There were some things in there, though, that were, from my vantage point, really positive for you. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I think everyone that watched the match could agree that I did a lot of good stuff. And both of us are going to make adjustments. Every time that you compete against someone, it's an opportunity for you guys to adjust and prepare for the next matchup. And no match will ever be the same as the previous. We had an extremely tight match both times, right? I think it was a one-point match in New York City, a 10-10 match in Turkey. Who knows what it'll be like next time if we even get a chance to meet, but I'm hoping ideally we'll be on opposite sides and we'll wrestle in the final. What do you think about him training on American soil now full-time? Uh, no comment. Okay. Uh, going forward, let's talk a little bit about today. When's the last time you had a heavyweight come and ask you about double weight legs? Uh -huh. That was pretty cool. That was really cool. I try to walk in humility at all times, and I have a lot of respect for Stephen Neal, not because he's got three Super Bowl rings, but really because he was a two-time NCAA champion and world champion. And 
he's one of the greats in our sport. For him to be a heavyweight, it's such a great athlete at that size, to be able to shoot doubles the same way a man 100 pounds lighter than him could is pretty incredible. And he has some tweaks and different intricacies in which his double is really special. And I wanted to see it. And I watched it on the highlight video when we were in LA last night. And I was like, damn, that was incredible. That's pretty cool to watch. And fortunately for me, he's been hanging out with us all week and he was kind enough to come out and be like, hey JB, this is how I do my double. I don't hit my lead knee. I try to stay up and explosive and run through a guy's hips almost like a football tap. So there's no surprise why he was such an amazing football player. Although he was on the offensive side, I think that he did an amazing job at transitioning from wrestling to football. And the things that he does and still does in the wrestling community are, are pretty cool. I'm glad that he's around. And this is the unique thing about us being here at Camp Pendleton. We're a very inviting, hospitable environment that we try to create here where we allow our past legends and future legends. The young guys are all a part of this. They're all a part of this and this is why we've been so special for the last few years and that's why our trajectory is going upward and we're going to be great for a long time. Pretty cool that he's coming and asking you about it. You know, and he's, yeah. his competitive days are long gone. He's yeah. still involved, but... I think he, he wants to learn the double from every position so when he does go forward he can say, hey, this is how I do my double. This is how JV does his double. I think if you look at the greats in this country and the guys that shot double legs, I'd have to say that me and him are at the top of the list in terms of double leg shooters in the world history or in American history that were able to become world champions. I can't really think of many world champions or Olympic champions besides maybe myself, Stephen Neal, Brandon Slay, probably Kenny Monday that were like, we were our go-tos were doubles. Um, yeah, so it's really cool. I'm glad that he did that that was cool you might not shoot more as many doubles as you did at the beginning you got so much more than you did I try I try to evolve um really for me I have to raise the level at which I wrestle sooner that's really gonna be the ultimate test for me come this world championship I feel like if I wrestle as hard as I can I'm unbeatable and there's never been a match in which I've given my all 100% had nothing to lose left it all in the mat that I didn't get my hand raised. And really challenging myself mentally to have that mental endurance and that disciplined focus for a long period of time. Five matches in a row, six minutes at a time, I think I'll be a world champion again. And it's a pretty special year. It's gonna be not a record-breaking year, but a record-tying year. What is 2011 Jordan Burroughs versus 2018 Jordan Burroughs? What's that look like? I think I'm a lot more savvy. 2011, I might shoot myself out. But damn, it'd be hard to wrestle a guy that just fakes a ton and shoots a ton. I was, uh, I wrestled at a high level there. And really not because of a, a lot of thinking, but the opposite. Because I was oblivious to what it took to be the best. But I knew that I had what it took to be the best. And I knew that my skills would translate if I could accompany that skill set and whatever I lacked thereof with effort. The harder I wrestled, Sometimes I power through positions that I might be outmatched or outclassed in technically. And so now I've sharpened my skills technically. I've improved, I think, in every aspect of my wrestling. It's just the willingness to do that, to shoot a ton, to wrestle really hard, to exert a ton of energy without inhibition or without fear of being fatigued or doing all the work. 